All right. Hello, everyone. I'm Cleotonic. Today we're going to be playing Saga Scarlet Grace to wrap up this fine marathon. So why don't we get started? Really return to the title screen. All right. We've got two things to say before we start this run. Well, three. One, Saga 2020. Two, it's going to be a tumultuous ride through this game, all the way through the end. Um, it's fairly tame for a bit, but the, the end stretch of this game is very, very rough. So we're going to do our best together, you and me. And then third, I have two five-month-old kittens that are very rambunctious, so there may I may need to take a, like a break uh, if they start acting up. So, with that being started, I think we can. With that being said, I think we can get started. So, in three, two, one, go. All right. So we are playing Leonard's scenario. There's four scenarios. We open the game with a personality test that allows us to just like put in um, random answers to random questions and it will just randomly assign you, or not randomly, based on what questions you answer and ask um, or are asked, you'll get a character, but you can just cancel out of it. I tend to play games that uh, have personality tests. So we just answer a few, and then no matter what it is, we're just going to choose Leonard. It's usually about six or seven of them. This might be ball mates. Okay, so that's actually good because we don't want to see Taria. Because we're actually going to get her in her party. I'll explain in a second. I'll need to grow up fast if I'm going to drown a scarlet. Just want to make sure. Get some voice clips there. All right. So, explain a little bit about this game. This game was released for in its original form for the PlayStation Vita in 2016, which is the first game since Usaga in 2002, Unlimited Saga. So, the grand return to the the series. Now, there were some other entries in the the Saga series. Kind of like um, like a mobile game and stuff like that, but this is like the the grand return to the the console release. So, so yeah, uh, the version I'm playing on, however, is the Steam version that was released as part of the quote unquote ambitions package that came out in December of 2019, three years later, and it got an official English translation. So, that is what I'm playing now. So Leonard is one of the four scenarios you can go through. Compared to the other scenarios, Leonard is by far the most open. And uh, I guess as we go along, we'll kind of explain what open means. But some of the other scenarios are somewhat linear. And this one is very much, you can get to the final boss within about like 15 minutes if you know what you're doing. But... If you try to fight the final boss with your starting party, you will get destroyed. So, we're not going to do that. We're going to power up. Some of the other scenarios, you have to do quite a bit of stuff in order to actually access the final boss. So. Okay, so the story is... There's a lot to explain. There's a lot of like deep mechanics of this game, so I'll try to keep up. But the general story is that Leonard is a farmer who has this woman, Sasha, who... Um, kind of like falls unconscious and tells him to help her with her quest for drowning the star Scarlet Shards. We're going to take a quick fight here. We're going to um, set up our party with kind of like a specific setup. Do something. And then kind of talk about the implications of what we're doing right here in a bit. Uh, but generally, we'll be taking fights. Actually, I think we'll probably explain like why we're taking fights after we explain some parts about the battle system. Whoops. So we're going to put on fast combat. This is after you beat the game, you get fast combat, which is like 
massively sped up. So you just saw a united attack here, which is literally bump combat. So it means that we get to kind of manage our turn order by destroying enemies and you literally have these like nodes on the bottom and when they bump together you get kind of like synergy throughout your run. Uh, but it's, you know, it's a straight and narrow. It, it is an RPG. It has a lot of saga-like elements. We'll see sparking, we'll see um, life points, the whole thing. Recruiting characters. This game doesn't have dungeons per se, but it has a pretty extensive world map and we kind of just take fights at locations. We're going to visit this place to Castle Golan to get uh, both Arthur and Balmaint. So we're going to go over and get Balmaint, which is one of the other four main uh, protagonists. And so Balmaint is okay. He is pretty good if you train him up casually. But the main reason we're here is for Arthur. Arthur comes with the block ability, which is very important. Executioner of Castle Cove. As you can see, the text scrolls very quickly. We'll talk about the story implications when we get to the library. Uh, but Balmaint comes with Arthur, who is kind of like his right-hand man, and that's what we're here for. So starting out this run, we are given the directive to go to the library because of what I was talking about before with Sasha and drowning the Scarlet Shards. All we really know is that we're trying to find out about this place called I Hanum, which is kind of this like sacred place that's kind of a fairy tales. So that's all we know for now. Just go to the Imperial Library. So that's what we're doing. So when we visit a town like that, we're actually just picking up a accessory or some kind of gift. So this it kind of transitions quickly, but the idea is that we're going around and trying to pick up extra accessories, which we do use all the ones we pick up, obviously. Okay, so this area is actually where the final stretch of the game takes place, but we need to unlock some other stuff elsewhere. There is full voice acting for every character in this game. And... The, so you see all these like events happening. You can start to fight these and go down paths. But again, like the game is very, very open. So all we're really doing is doing the required story triggers and then everything that we specifically want to do to get to the end. So we come here, come to the library. They, they tell us basically go away and that what you're looking for isn't here. But she does kind of like give you a hint where to go next, which is to the northeast boundary. And that's actually the last trigger we need in order to unlock the final stretch of the game. Uh, so we haven't really done too many fights yet, but we basically now have more access to the map than we did before. And we're going to start to go around and basically just power up our party. First order of business is to pick up a character called Chiago. Chiago is a very good character because he has a specific role. We'll talk about roles in a minute. Um, but he has a role that allows him to do extra attack damage for the sake of his HP. Well, aren't you so, just the unusual bunch? you can hear him there. So, every character has a certain stat array. And those arrays are fixed and do not change for that character over the course of the game. No matter what you do, it's always the same for that character. Right, so like... Uh, like Balmain, for instance, is a big, strong guy, so he's kind of slow, but he's got good strength and he has good life points. That doesn't change ever. His weapon skills will change over time as he participates in battle. His HP will go up based on the number of battles and fights. And then finally, every character has unique roles, meaning that uh, they are kind of like specific attributes to the character. So they're kind of like passives or sometimes act for the most part passives that are like unique to that character so every character kind of has their own unique flavor so arthur has shield 
block rate up, which is really good, and we'll talk about the implications on that. So we're going to take our first fight. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of switching around. Take you. Chiago. I'm going to get rid of Gabriel and put Balmain in for now. And the main thing is that we're going to uh, equip, whoops, equip Arthur with a frying pan. Make sure that Casper gets a buckler. We'll talk about the implications of this in a second. And we're going to switch our formations, which is a classic saga thing. Uh, to momentum. Love Casper. So Casper is our big uh, tank, and he his role, his passive ability, allows us to have higher targeting on him. So. This will so we're just going to get through these fights. Uh, the reason that we're doing this now is... Okay, see, so you see United Attack here. Which is good. So what I'm going to do is attack with him and then attack with Casper. So I'm trying to get block learned on Casper as a sparked tech. Okay, that was a little risky, but that's actually good because now I can do it again. We'll talk about the implications of how to spark techs because it's a very long-winded com conversation. All you need to know for now is that we're trying to get blocks specifically on Casper, so he needs to have the maul that he has equipped on him. Now. But we're doing all of this. Sorry to, sorry to keep sidetracking. There's just a lot to communicate. Um, the reason why we're doing all of this is to unlock Ellie Said, specific at this location, because Ellie Said is a mage who comes with Call Lightning, which is extremely good, and we're going to use her for the rest of the game. Alright, so here we are, sparking a new tech. This one's a little early on Arthur, it would have been better to get him in the next boss fight, but no complaints. Uh, yeah, we can do this, it's good. So, every time you use a weapon in battle, you are powering up your weapon skill. And you're also getting closer to learning a new tech for that ability, or for that uh, particular skill skill tree. So learning techs is a bit complicated, like I was saying before. But generally, if you have a spear and you use spear, spear techs, you'll chain into other techs. If you see question marks like this in a battle, it means that the enemy is taking a counter action. Um, we can play this like this, okay. And every enemy has specific types of counterattacks, so you gotta be careful about which ones you do. We talk about counterattacks maybe later if it's relevant, but for the most part, um, it's not super prevalent in this run. Okay, so we make our way through this area. Oops, I'm actually just trying to get out of here. And then we're going to come up here, talk to the Makulil Kali commander, then we come back here. Oh, it's running too fast. You're actually supposed to like sneak by to get in here. Sneaky. I'm not sneaky. Oh, sparking is called glimmers, which every, everybody, I'm speaking on behalf of everybody. Everybody rejects. Okay. So now we're going to take our Scarlet Shard, whoops, and we're going to use it, which influences this location here. We're going to fight a battle, and this is all such that we make progress towards getting Ellie said. So we have to actually do a boss fight here. Uh, but with Chiago and our current party, we should be good. I'm supposed to have Axe on Lissa. I'm not totally sure how this happened, but it's all good. Gothic Axe back on her. Put her in front, and we're off. Okay, so the goal is to get Casper to learn block, but all we need to do in order for that to happen is for him to not take actions in battle and for somebody else to get targeted by a physical attack. So he just got double targeted, which means that he wasn't going to block. So, um, But if it's an ally, there's a chance. We were taking actions with him before, so that he had some internal meters start to build up, such that 
he was closer to sparking a new ability, but there's a point in which you need to have him stop doing any actions because that's the requirements for learning block. What do you think? Well, this is the yeah. flavor. we'll talk about battle rank in a little while. <laughs> a lot of the mechanics in this game are very, very, um, you know, true to Saga spirit, very hard to understand and um, you really have to do your homework in order to figure out how the game handles things. A lot of people who play this game casually get confused by the whole easy, normal, hard system, which admittedly is not very clear. Alright. Well, one, we're jamming. Two, we're trying to target the enemies here uh, that are not the boss. We try to target ones that are... Um, yeah, we can, we can do this. Try to target ones that are specifically um, taking actions and not defending. Alright, that was really good for Tiago. So this boss can use Feast. Hopefully it doesn't. Okay, so he does. But that's okay. So what we're going to do is try to snipe this guy before the boss takes an action. So it should be okay. Because if the spider... Okay, perfect. Is the spider... Oh, nice. Sweet. That's good. So that's a stun. Feast didn't happen anyways. So now we can just beat this fight. This is actually an incredibly good fight. Uh, let's be safe. So you see the star system here? This is called BP. And this is effectively like... Oh, this is fine. We're basically about to stop using ball meat, so vertical smash is fine. That was a really fast fight. Really, really good start to this run. Which is great. I haven't learned block yet, which is unfortunate, but it's kind of to be expected, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, but that's like the first boss. Try to explain. Whoops. Try to explain more about the... BP system when we're in battles. But basically, every turn, you kind of get more... BP to spend, and you can choose any characters you want to like use the action points. So you can have like one character use a very strong tech, or you can have a bunch of characters use a bunch of weaker techs. But you're it's up to you every round how you want to spend your points. Thank you for having me along. All right, got Ellie said, she's got the skunk like hair. She is very, very powerful. She's a very good mage. We're going to use her for the entirety of the game. There's a baby here. My two cents is that this port of this game was handled pretty well. They made a modern UI around it. They have a classic UI, which is just what the Vita had, but um, they, you know, they properly built out a modern UI and the game runs very well. Uh, the Steam version, I'm playing on Steam version, which just has the fastest loading times compared to any of the other Ambitions versions. I don't know much about the Vita version, the original version. Also talking about the Ambitions version. Ambitions is like the, the modern re-release that happened in December 2019 worldwide. And it basically is just kind of like they, they both ported the game to modern consoles and to Steam PC. But then they also added a lot of content. There's a lot of like post-game content. And they they increased the amount of like weapons and armor and all that stuff pretty pretty heavily. Alright, so we got Ellie said. We're gonna pick up Taria, who is another mage. She's one of the four protagonists as well. And she is good for a number of reasons. But the most important reason is that she learns a skill called Water Blast, which is magic, and we're going to use it on the second form of the final boss. So she's important for that reason. And what we do to... so this is her. And what we do to get her is basically in this whole area we have to visit a bunch of places and learn about her and some of the things that are happening. So here, see Khan. Hello Khan. 
Khan is Taria's like second hand man when you play her quest. Okay, come over here. We just need to visit this place. We're gonna visit a beast den. This is important because this is the second thing we're doing in this area. We're gonna promise to get them a jellyfish and then come to South Gate. Talk to this guard. So we're done with the triggers before getting Taria. We're gonna do this, which is for a scene later. House, part of the killers. I think that's in Taria's scenario as well. I'm a simple ceramicist, so don't expect much of me. Taria's with us, she's a water mage, and we're off battle. So now we're gonna switch some people out. Switch Lissa for Taria. And we're going to speed them up by removing their shield. Do the Ring of the Fae. Taria. I think actually Taria is good. No, we haven't learned yet. We haven't learned block yet, so we're going to keep them all. So now you see the power of Call Lightning. This is actually a rough start to this fight, but we're going to try to make it work. Because if we get hit by Sweet Miss, we're going to have to reload. So this game auto saves, which is super good. Okay, uh, that's fine. Taria is fine. Shockwave, okay. So we're gonna just have to play this safe. But we should be okay. You can see the power of Call Lightning on the next turn. So magic takes multiple turns to cast. It can be one, it can be up to four. And the idea is that you cast it on one turn and then multiple turns later, you'll get the, the benefit of it. Um, hopefully he survives. So here, Call Lightning, you can do a billion damage. Very good, so we'll get a United attack, so we're fine for this fight. Sometimes this fight can go a little south, but this is totally, totally doable. Okay, so there's a system called Flux, which is how the game rewards you for trying to level up your magic after battles. Oh, wow, she learned it right away. It's the run. That usually takes a few. It's just a percent chance of happening, so. It's your girl. Okay, so I'm gonna hit lightning again, and we're going to primarily just defend. Yeah, we're gonna defend you. So we're taking these two fights to get, get the jellyfish, which is gonna be used for the boss fight that's coming next, just to access the boss fight. I'm actually not going to defend him. So I'm, I'm really hoping that Casper learns block. So he blocked instead, which is unfortunate. Doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So we're just gonna put it off. It's unfortunate because it would be very helpful for the next boss fight, but it is what it is. Actually, I'm going to use aim. So you'll notice quickly that our main damage dealers are Ellie said, who usually does call lightning. There's some other magic we'll use and Chiago, who is our main spear damage dealer. Spear is single target for the most part, except for Reaper, but this aiming skill that he comes with is incredibly good. Like I was saying before, he comes with a ability, or he comes with a roll that boosts his attack for the sake of his max HP. Oh, on that bite there, I was really hoping to see lock. No good. So I was, I was trying to extend this an extra turn. Uh, it's a little dangerous now, but we, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll be like super safe here. I really wanted Casper to try to trigger it. Oh, well, never mind. Don't hit me. Okay. <laughs> it's all over the place, but it's fine. We made it through. And again, like the penalty for re-rolling fights is really not that much. You can, like many other Saga games, you can kind of just, um, yeah, I mean, we're done. Let's do this. You can just reload. There's an auto save function, which is super good. Okay, so we got our jellyfish. Now we're going to fight Queen Moth over here, which is an optional fight, but you'll know why. So we say, don't tell me what to do immediately after getting the jellyfish for Queen Moth. And we're gonna go straight into the fight. Casper is effectively useless unless he does trigger. This is a very hard fight. Um, so we are going to do our best. It's a pretty good start though. Uh, but there's a decent chance that we have to restart this fight. There, there's a bonus reward for doing this fight early. 
and it's very good. All right, so seeing question marks like this on turn two is excellent because it basically just means that we get a free turn of casting time. Um, you can actually do... Yeah, this is super early for her, but um, I think it's good. Let's just do it. So question marks, again, are counter moves or interrupts. Usually flamethrower happens now, okay. So that's where this is. So we're gonna, Ellie said, take the hit here. We're gonna start to do some damage. And I'm only really worried about two hits on Arthur. Okay, we blocked it. Hopefully paralyze here. No, but we chose correctly. Oh, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> Look how much HP it has. <laughs> Yeah, and there goes our blocker, so this is going to have to go pretty well from here in order for this to not blow up, so. Um, yeah. Alright, we have to restart, it's fine. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. He's living. Unfortunately, this flamethrower was going off. See, if I killed that flamethrower user before, everything would have been fine, but... He had a sliver of HP, and yeah. Okay, so that's fine. Show off what the restart system is in this game. So everybody's LP will go down by one, but we can just redo the fight. And technically there's some bonus that you get when you do, when you restart like this, where your united attacks will actually do more damage every time that you restart in battle. That's basically it. Okay, question mark round two is really good. Um, we can do the same thing, actually, that we did last time. This. Question mark again, which is nice. Good, so we didn't see... We did not see flamethrower, which is excellent. So, question mark on the ogre means that they're going to be defending one another. Taria dying again is... No problem. We don't really need her alive for too much. This is going to be a reduced damage. Oh, no. Okay, so it didn't trigger the reduced damage. It's great. Uh, so this is what a successful fight looks like, which is excellent. So we're going to power you up with lightning. You'll notice that the actions here are blue. Uh, let's be safe about this. Queen Moth is weak to blunt damage, which is frying pan. Uh, but the blue stars mean that after a united attack, when the, the like the bubbles bump together, your skill cost is reduced for the next turn. Okay, so question mark means free turn because it's just a counter move. So it means that our mages can get another go, and here we go. Just another lightning. So this is actually really good for turn or round two of this fight. I didn't want to attack. Yeah, I still don't really want to, but. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to trigger a counterattack if it happens. And then if it does, then... Oh, okay. It did. If it did, then the, the counter hit would hit Ellie said, and then Chiago would get his attack. Right, so LP is life points. Oops. And when you get down to zero life points in this game, it means that you're not able to use a character for... It's about, it's somewhere, it, it changes, but it's about six to eight-ish engagements, meaning that you have to fight a whole bunch of battles before they can uh, revive and be back in your party. Okay, so the reason we did that fight was for a weapon called the Twin Spikes, which is incredibly good for this part of the game, and it's pretty much the reason that we can get through any of this fast. So it's a 42 strength weapon compared to like the, I think it's like 11? on the weapon that comes with Chiago. So we're gonna switch it on him immediately. No, it's 15, sorry. Uh, 15, then we're gonna put the Wind Barrier on him. So Wind Barrier is plus two to your mobility. So now that we have stronger, well, he's very slow on this fight. Now that we have a stronger weapon, we're gonna put an accessory on Chiago to make him generally go faster. Taria is just getting blown up, <laughs> which is sad. Fuck. But now you can see the, the relative, the power. So now we got an extra turn here. Again, I'm really hoping that Casper learns block, but he's just not doing it. There's a stretch of C encounters that we're about to do that he really should. Be 
careful and block with you. Um, but we're gonna get this Thorny Fetters off, which is a single target nature magic. And that was a good fight. So yeah, between Ellie said having Cold Lightning, Thorny Fetters. Oops, what am I doing? Thorny Fetters and Chiago having the big damage spear. We're in really good shape. Okay, so we're gonna trigger this serpent, which is going to trigger Earth Golems at a location that we're gonna walk through in a little bit. But for now, we're gonna just fight these um, sea encounters. So I took that fight before at the place called Tomamo Stone, because one of the mechanics of this area is that if you fight these battles in a certain way, you start to trigger Volcanic Eruption. So we're gonna fight an optional boss later to get a weapon. This is a relatively straightforward fight. The idea is that you block Chiago, who's going to get targeted because he is attacking, and he gets targeted with moves that can stun, so we have to be careful. You'll see me doing this a lot, where I like trigger an action with Elisad or Chiago, and then I have Arthur, and then hopefully once he learns it, um, I'm actually going to Reaper in this case. Arthur, and once Casper learns it, also Casper using block a lot. Oh, that's really good. That's really, really good. Okay, so that's something we need to farm for later in the run, but we triggered it now, which is great. I'll explain that later. Just remember that we triggered Venison early. Uh, we can do this. So she's about to get her lightning off, which is good. So, as a speed game, this game kind of shines in that how you go about every battle and trying to minimize both animation times and number of actions can really save a lot of time. So compared to something like Saga Frontier, where you're seeing, you know, like very specific menu... Well, sorry, not menu. Well, like menuing, but uh, very specific movement on the maps to get around enemies. I mean, there really is not like any corollary in this game to that. But this game has a very wide array of like actions and decision making when you're in in these fights to try to minimize how long it takes. So um, even if you see me stop to think for a second, it usually ends up saving time if you come up with the right decision about how to get through battles quickly. So. Right, so again, the whole the whole reasoning here for all of this is that we are trying to erupt the volcano. But the, the second kind of like overall overarching reason for all of this is that we, we need to just get fights in order to power up. So I guess we can take a minute to talk about that as we clear these fights, which is largely just either Call Lightning and Reaper, depends on the fight. That was unfortunate that C didn't die. There you go. Okay, good fight. Um, so, when you take actions in battle, you are generally getting the strength of whatever action you are using up. So for instance, Chiago uses spear a lot, so his spear skill is going to go up. It's like, pretty simple, right? There's a very complex system about how the game rewards you skill points based on the relative internal level of your party versus the enemy parties. I would say for this run, it's not super relevant. You can assume for pretty much every fight that our internal level that is not communicated to the player, classic saga, is the same as the enemies, with the exception of the final boss, which is a big exception. Um, so, you know, you take actions in battle, and you generally try to power up. And then HP is specifically based on the number of battles you fight. So, you just do a raw number of battles, it doesn't matter where they are, it doesn't matter like the quality of them, they can be easy, they can be hard. Just raw number of battles is what's going to correlate to your HP. HP is rewarded to you randomly. 
after every fight you get a reward and you know you'll eventually get more HP over time but just raw number of battles is what is correlated to what your HP is so oh she already got lightning this is the learning is really good for this uh, we're gonna do this we're like way ahead of schedule so even though we haven't learned block yet which is definitely concerning we are doing really well in other fields so things are things are moving along so doing good so i was talking about the story triggers to get to the final boss so we have to cross this bridge this technically is the only required series of two fights that you need in order to access the final stretch of the game Okay, so we got question marks, meaning that she can interrupt with us, so... We're probably gonna get interrupted, but it's not the end of the world. Casper, I need you to spark. Alright, so th that's fine. I was expecting that. No, where was it? Alright, so we're gonna play careful with you, and... Uh, so another concept is that... If one of your mages... Starts casting shelter. Okay, that's good. It's kind of on the wrong character because that's basically a defense move, but um, it costs two BP instead of one, which is why it's less efficient. So you're about to get that off. It's kind of a weird fight. Things didn't really go that well. Uh, so for Charya's instance, she started casting magic. Just the fact that she started casting magic means that she's has a chance of her rank and water magic going up doesn't matter if the, it actually goes off. But it, in this case it did. So you'll see me doing that later, where I tr I'm in a battle, I cast magic, I know that the magic is not going to actually trigger in the fight, so it seems pointless and a waste of time, but I'm doing it because there's a chance of the associated skill going up. Okay, I'm kind of like confused on how to handle this, because <laughs> we're like so far in advance, but it's fine. Kitty break. Say hi to the boat swing. Alright, so we got Bone Crusher, meaning that we're going to... Hopefully snipe A. No. No, no protect from you and no snipe. That's okay. It's gonna... Go along. All right, so we're getting a whole bunch of actions here, so I'm actually going to... <sighs> yeah, I'm kind of fumbling, honestly. Got some weird situations already. I really want... Oh, that happened. There it is! Sometimes you just gotta... Sometimes you just gotta ask the game. All right, that's really good. Really good. Needed that to happen. There's a few more sparks that we need to have happen, but we're definitely on... What they say on pace. So this is great. Now we kind of have two defenders in battle. Probably should have used him to defend on this turn. But that's fine. And we get aim on this turn, clear this guy out. Boom. Boom. Excellent. Okay. Big HP gains. So magic rank going up means that generally there's like a hidden power value of every magic. So generally it means that the magic power goes up a little bit. It's not a lot. Um, and then often the BP cost goes down, meaning that you can just, whoops, you can cast the same spell for less BP, which is really good. So call lightning just is now one star less, which is great. Alright, story trigger coming up here. A librarian told us to come up here for some reason, even though this is actually a hint for figuring out their schemes. Why don't we take this moment to say, how is your Saga 2020 experience going? Mine's great. Chilling all day. Watching some saga. Well. 
We're gonna fight some fights up here. So again, we're just kind of fighting fights for the sake of uh, getting our rank up. Happens to be that you see all five of the elements in this game have their own little easy fight area. So that basically being able to clear out easy fights is very, very good if you can do them quickly, which is exactly what this whole area is. So we do all of this up here. So this is the water element. We'll be going to the nature element. There's a fire, steel, earth element as well. This is kind of the, the last call fight in the event that you can't get Casper to spark block. We got two, two paralysis. Awesome. So some conditions actually cure themselves when you get bumps. So watch Ellie said right now, her paralysis went away. That was a good fight actually, despite the paralysis. I yet far to go. Boom. So we already got our three rank ups that we need. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's not true. I need to do Water Blast. I was getting that confused because I usually don't have rank one for Poisonous Mist. So we're almost there. But there's going to be no issues getting there. So like, for instance, I'm using only four out of the five BP per turn. But my fastest actions are going to be using Chiago anyways, so it's basically just like micromanaging every fight, try to be as fast as possible. Um, in this case, I'm going to use aiming, even though it is a slower animation than just using pierce, which would kill the enemy. I'm using aiming because I'm specifically trying to get its rank up so that its BP cost goes down by one, which is what happens at rank one. So there are times where I'm like, quote unquote, being inefficient but it's for the sake of later being more efficient. Okay, so we got two more fights up in this area. Again, all these fights are super easy, but they are very good for building up our internal stats. Let us proceed with caution. It's really great that we learned Kata's Comfort, that medicine, so early. It's like really, really good. I'm actually going to use Reaper, because that should be really close. So Reaper is an example of a skill that actually boosts your speed per turn. So it moves you up in the, the combat queue. Gloop. Alright, so we're on our fifth here. We should be seeing rank up on either aiming or reaper soon. The way you rank up an ability is simply to use it a lot for everything that's not magic. Okay. That's all you had. So we're done up here. We're three. Voices in this game are pretty, pretty out there. All right. So now we picked up a character called Tissy Sack before, which we're going to use her temporarily now. Um, oh, sorry, we have a fight to do. So we're not fighting this egg yet, which is going to birth into a volcanic dragon. We're not going to fight it yet, but we are going to fight this, which is triggered by me getting the serpent up above, and it's just another easy fight to get through. So the first fight is easy difficulty, the second one is normal, but Tiago's strength can easily clear this out. Uh, how do I say this? Uh, okay, so there is a battle rank in this game that is correlated to the the battles that you fight. But it's more correlated with the number of unique locations that you fought at. So one might think that it's kind of like 
their best interest to fight hard fights over and over to get your battle rank up more than, say, fighting easy fights. But that's not necessarily true. If you have the option to go around fighting a lot of easy and normal fights that are unique, you actually get your battle rank up more. There's a point, obviously, at which you don't have any more unique fights to get through, so that will wear off. Um, but... The idea is that you have about a 5 times multiplier on fighting a battle for the first time versus subsequent time. And that's just like, unfortunately, a very hidden mechanic to the player. But that's the whole reasoning behind the, the route that we're taking here, is that we're fighting one time in many different locations, generally doing easy fights, because... Okay, so an easy fight that you fight for the first time, gives you 12 battle experience. A hard fight that is a repeat location gives you 5 battle experience. So, you do the math. Okay, so we're going to do something kind of tricky here. We're going to take everybody out of our party. We're going to put Tissy Sack in our party only. And this is all to get a venison on our team. I did not get... This is Zach. What did I do? I just didn't do it? Alright, it's fine. I actually don't need her. I just blanked, I guess. But I went to the location where she is. Alright, whatever. It's fine. Uh, we can use Chiago. It's just a little bit more dangerous. So we're going to specifically put Free For All on. And the idea is that I'm just going to soak hits. And if I take a strong enough hit, then a Venison will trigger. And the Venison... Benison? The Benison triggering is going to stick to the formation that I have on now, which is called Free For All. So this is the problem with using Chiago is that he dies. <laughs> uh, I have to watch his LP because I might have to switch for another character. I have to go get Tissy Sag. But... You bore me. Also, specifically me taking an action means that my defenses aren't up. All right, so I'm gonna kill the frog here and we're just gonna try to get the snake to do enough damage. So it's specifically like after every action, there's just a percent chance. This is one of the few percent chances in the game that I don't know what the percent chance is, but there's a percent chance of getting the Kata's Comfort, which is tied to this location assigned to our current formation, which is called Free For All. I didn't talk about formations yet, and I guess because we didn't have any Romancing Saga stuff today, that you probably don't even know what formations are. Uh, oh no, no, what am I talking about? No, the, I'm not sure how relevant they are in Saga Frontier. Maybe I wasn't paying attention enough. They're probably pretty relevant. Uh, anyways, the, the point is, is that formations are mostly unique in this game to the effect of how you regenerate BP per turn. So the formation, there it is, okay, so we got, third try is actually pretty good. So I'll use Reaper on this turn. So this formation that I have on right now, free for all, we're gonna use it for the first form of the final boss. And we wanna have Venison, which is a random percent chance, or sorry, not percent chance, it's a random chance when certain triggers occur in a battle to occur. We'll talk about that later. All you need to know for now is that we have the Benison assigned to us on free-for-all. Okay, uh, we're gonna take the bird fight. See our friend Kresa coming up soon. Okay, so we didn't get Reaper to level 2 yet, so we'll just do this. It's fine. Okay, uh, but yes, for formations, Free For All is like the very basic default formation. It just says 1 BP per turn recovery, and it comes with a slight bonus, which is that your characters get sped up a bit. The formation I'm using right now, which is the main formation that we use for most of the game, is called Momentum, and it means that the first two character slots in your party if they defeat an enemy, you'll get plus 2 BP upon defeating that enemy. 
So because Ellie said and Chiago are our primary damage dealers, every time they defeat an enemy, they'll get plus two. So I'm gonna get plus four now. Uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, Ellie says not in my second slot. Sorry. It's probably still Taria. We switch it later. But if it was Chiago that got that kill, it would have been plus four. Sorry. It doesn't actually matter for uh, the fights right now. Okay. I never noticed the green soles of Arthur's shoes until right now. Because he's rarely dead. Okay, so we see our friend Kresa, who's part of a technically, yeah, I mean, it's a side quest, but it's for a bunch of characters that we're going to get. Uh, specifically, Subaki is the most important. So we see our friend Kresa here, who is apparently just a nice gal of the, the manor. You know, big fan. Fan of the party. Now that we saved her from a bunch of ravens. Even though she's from Raven Manor. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they went rogue. Maybe they're like teenagers. But something suspicious going down. I'm trying to think. Pretty much like everything is going pretty well in this round so far. No. No problem. We got blocked a little late, but it really wasn't a problem. Okay, so we talked to her, then we talked to this guy, who is apparently, like, very suspect about what she's up to. And we go back to her, and she's like, okay, help me out. Help me to help you. I need you to get some chip stones for me from this location, the vent. So we need to fight this battle here. We're going to do call lightning on turn one. And vent him. Alright, so she got targeted. We got question marks on turn two and break armor, so that's a pretty good setup. So question marks again, counterattacks. It's generally economy efficient for us if they do a counterattack, because I know every counterattack in the game on the enemies that are relevant to the speedrun. So, it means that I can generally work around them, and uh, that knowledge is very helpful. I'll say this about this run. Um, it's a very complicated run. It's very not easy to get into. I'm pretty much the only Western runner of this game currently. And it's probably a combination of this game not being super popular, but it's also that this game is extremely complicated under the hood, and it takes a lot of knowledge about how mechanics work in order to get through it fast. I guess I didn't really talk about this before, but I'm doing a pretty, I mean, quote-unquote safe, marathon safe run, where the final boss is just ridiculous. Um, as marathon safe-ish as I can be without wasting a billion years. Um, what am I doing? Uh, but the, like, the true any percent run is similar to this. Oh, I chose the wrong action. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> it is a pleasure. Talk to Subaki, very important. Uh, but the any percent run is very similar to this. It basically just cuts out a lot of quote unquote fluff of preparing your party. Basically everything related to Kresa here all the way down through getting Archwitch, which is what we're off to do now, is effectively cut out. They go straight to the grind, they change a bunch of things, and it's a much more strict, very reset heavy for the entirety of the run kind of run so I think a lot of what we're doing will gel together when we get to the final boss because you'll see all of the fruits of our labor start to come together but for now it's a lot of like running around picking up party members trying to make sure we're getting text along the way that certain characters are present to get HP in battle that sort of thing there's a grind segment that's going to be coming up. Which we'll kind of take a beat to talk about why we're bringing certain party members to the final boss and what the stats need to be and all that. But for now, we're just kind of doing play-by-play -play of what we're actively doing. We're coming down here to have Agniana join our party. Agniana is purely a backup axe user that we're going to use for the final form of the final boss. 
hopefully we don't use her, but we're going to prepare her as if we do need to use her. And we'll talk about that wonderful set of circumstances once we get there. I gotta be careful on Arthur's life points, because he's at one life point, and if he dies, then he's going to be out of battle for a while. I have a item called the Emperor's Salve. Oh, good. Okay. So we need to get this part, which it was just gonna happen over time, but we got it, which is good. This should be leveling up, like, soon, if not right now. Not right now. I like the little, like, orbs on her head. Alright, so she's queen of the, the bandit kingdom. So we come over here. We're gonna get a bandit... Or a ring of thievery? Yeah. Oops. So Lissa is, like, our sidekick, who is part of the manor, I guess, adjacent to our farm. But she's like clearly Leonard's love interest, even though he's uh, very aloof. He just cares about farming, dude. Girls, like whatever. It's all about the big farming. Okay, so we talked to Subaki before, after we did all of the Krasa stuff. So Krasa joined our party, but we actually are not going to use her at all. Um, in some routes you can use her, but we're not... She's a, she's a very good mage. She comes with Call Lightning and she's good, but she has one pitfall, which is learning a specific skill called Hypergravity on her is uh, not easy, so it takes a long time. So unfortunately, she gets kind of gutted from the party, but it's okay. We have other options. So we see the Birdman over here not have the best success. Chasing down Subaki, who is out for finding witches. Then we come over to the Hole of Chaos, which is where the witches hang out. So this is the Archwitch, Subaki. Her name is Camellia, but that's her like code name for real. You'll see in a minute, her true name is Subaki. All right, so we're gonna do this. I really should have learned Reaper by now, but it's not the end of the world. All right, so it's jam time. So it's not really clear why we're fighting. I think there's just like general confusion in the air. So we end up fighting her, even though she's not really like uh, a threat to us. We're not the witch. Nice. I'm gonna hurl. So call lightning is very important in this fight. Um, spiral charge is generally just a fast, oh goodness, we're gonna hit by this. Okay, this is this is an odd situation, let's say. Nah. Okay. Sorry, a little slow. Uh, I really don't want Arthur to die. There's a bunch of implications here. I didn't want you to die either. <laughs> okay, fine. It's it's okay. Might be a little rough, but we just gotta protect. Gotta protect Ellie said so that she can get another lightning off, which might mean. Actually, no, we're gonna go for thorny feathers. Alright, don't die, Arthur. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Everything's fine, I think. Actually, he might die. Yeah. He's dead. Okay, so I need to check whether or not the Emperor Salve is going to revive him, or else I'm going to have to reload the save. That fight was uh, treacherous. <laughs> Love that Casper energy.
I'll say this very delicately. I would appreciate no hate talk about this game. Thanks. Okay. My true name is Tsubaki. Uh, so we're gonna see. It should, oops. Should be that our salve hopefully brings you back. He's back. Okay, we're fine. I'd never been in that situation before, but it's never really a problem. Cool. So we got two question marks. We're going to do this series of fights. So Subaki just joined us. Her true name is Subaki, as you just heard. Boom. So Spiral Charge is stronger than Aim. It's a single target move. It's very, very good. We're going to use it as much as we can, given the opportunity to. Back to the boneyard with you. Did you really not learn Reaper yet? Boy. It's okay. Sacrifice myself for you. I am the first to admit that this game is not clear about a lot of stuff, and it's um it's a complicated game. Like there's a lot going on and it's it's kinda tough to parse what's happening. Uh we gotta do this. Big brain. Okay, here we go. So really hoping that you can get targeted, which is great. Oh, we, we destroyed the enemy that was taking the action anyways. Okay, so this is good. Okay. So now we're going to have our defenders really make sure that our attackers don't go down. Be very careful about this. All right, they did their job. They protect. Them. So this should go pretty well from here. All right, so he's first, which is great. He's Reaper. Just using Call Lighting again in the event that she does go. So again, just using a action gives you a chance of ranking up that associated skill, so she might get nature magic up. Maybe. She got it up. She did not. That's fine, though. The whole point is that you just try to do it. So we're going to attack the one that is not defending. We're gonna do this. Well, no, I can't do that. What did you defend against? Whoops, okay. This a lot. So we're pretty good. You have to really need to make sure that she is guarded. We should be seeing Reaper level up, hopefully here. Nope. I really, I just really never use Reaper, huh? Oh, that's an unfortunate, uh... Oh, that's great. So the enemy got a united attack, uh, but we were able to outspeed it. Oh, we can do Reaper here, which is great. Ellie said staff is actually pretty good damage. Okay, finally. So it might be enough? It is not enough. Gonna hurl. Ah, uh, we should do this. Okay, so this is the last of the three fights here. Then we're gonna fight Archwitch, who's gonna uh, join our party after we fight her. Okay, uh, yeah, we're good. We're pretty much good. We're just good.
So the Phoenix is an optional fight. So among all four scenarios, there's like the big Phoenix side quest and there's the big Earth Serpent side quest. As part of this run, we don't have to fight them. So we definitely don't because they're pretty hard and they're like multiple boss fights to do it. But we do interact with it quickly. Okay, now it's time to fight Archwitch. So this fight is a little rough. You just have to play it carefully. Look upon me and despair. Despair. So now that Call Lightning is rank one and Reaper is rank one, it means that we can use both on the same starting turn to a fight, which is really good. Um, it means that usually on turn two, we switch to either doing Reaper and two times defend or aiming or spiral charge and one defend. We just have to pay attention to what Archwitch is up to in this fight because she can cast Churning Earth, which is going to take her a bunch of turns to get off as a spell, but makes her pretty dangerous. All right, in this case, people are poisoned, so I'm going to play this safe. Lightning's going to go off. I really should have used the aim, but it's fine. Big United Attack, all five. So United Attacks do get rid of some status effects, but unfortunately they do not get rid of Poison. And poison is devastating. Anybody who's played this game casually, um, in my own experience playing Ball Main scenario, oops. Poison is a devastating status effect. Archwitch actually has a lot of HP, but she opted not to use magic at all, so uh, this turn should do it. Perhaps I overdid oh, nice. <laughs> well, not nice. Taria has died a lot. Okay, so Archwitch joins our party, and she's actually pretty valuable. She has a very high intelligence stat, and she's going to learn hypergravity for us, hopefully. There's a chance she doesn't learn it, but we're going to try to get it on her. Uh, I should be using this. Yeah. For a witch, age is nothing. Okay, so we are done recruiting enemies, and we are going to effectively start our grind. So we're going to fight this battle here quickly. If I didn't have Kata's Comfort on Momentum Venison, then I would take the opportunity here to grind it out, but... Uh, thankfully, we already got it, so it's cool. Thank you, <laughs> Just triggered again. That's you. That right there is usually the move that it triggers on for the first time. But uh, yeah. So maybe I'll take a step back and talk about what benisons are. Benisons are. Things that happen in battle that are associated with, like, this game's gods in the game. And they have varying effects. Based on the location that you are fighting at, you have a chance of triggering a venison, and that venison will get assigned to whatever formation you currently have. And that's just for the rest of the game. So here, around this area, you'll get... Kata's Comfort, which is just straight HP heal, which is really, really valuable. Uh, what am I doing? So I'm going to put Elizabeth in the party. We're going to swap out Ellie's head for a while. I'm going to put Archwitch in. Archwitch is going to get the transitory staff, and we're going to specifically try to make Lissa as slow as possible. So we put the Harmonium on her. And the Protective Suit, which is going to make her mobility theoretically go down the the problem is that she is very fast inherently so even still like she'll go early in the fight so i'm going to sit here and grind this area a lot and we'll talk about why we need to do that in a little bit but for now uh, i want to finish talking about venisons uh okay well okay great 
So I was expecting that to happen on the next fight, but it happened here. She had a 50-50 shot of learning Vertical Smash or um, Maim, and she learned Maim, which is great. So we can continue. If she learned Vertical Smash, she'd have to. We'd have to restart. Uh, we'd have to reload. That's good. 47. Whoa. I guess we're kind of done talking about venisons. The only thing that's really important to know is that we want to have it for the final stretch of the game. So we'll have specific formations on. We have Kata's Comfort on two of them. And that's about all you can ask for. Okay, so let's talk about this grind right now. There's a lot happening. Like I said before, we are generally trying to... Just get number of battles, regardless of the location. Doesn't have to be unique. None of that matters. We're trying to get raw number of battles so that we can level up our HP. Our HP needs to be at roughly a baseline of 170 for all the main characters that are going to be fighting in the first and third forms of the final boss. 39! Whoa. Those are some big HP gains. So, while we do this, there's a bunch of other things, a bunch of other implications of trying to level up stats. So, I'm using a lot of spear abilities with Chiago. So, his spear ability is just going to go up. That's the case for pretty much all the other allies as well. So, that's good. We want to have more spear ability because the higher your spear ability is, the more damage you do when you use a spear attack, right? Pretty simple. This is just an important thing to know because, like I said before, every character has specific stats that never change. So if you can't change their stats and you get better, you either get better weapons or you get better proficiency with those weapons in terms of skill points. So that's how you get stronger in this game. So another element of what's going on here is that I very specifically on Lissa, Elizabeth, the first character you see here in our party, and potentially Agniana, I need them to trigger Dimensional Break in the final form of the final boss. What I'm doing is taking actions over and over. So that's bad. I need to reload. So that's an example of what we were trying to do. We're trying to get her internal meter up so that she learns a... She, she almost learns a new tech by sparking. But I need her to just take actions and specifically not spark such that her internal EXP is kind of like set up so that when I want her to spark, I can use a different action for her to spark something specific. So, all that's to say is that during this grind, generally what I'm trying to do is take a bunch of actions at the beginning of a fight, specifically just with her. Usually I clear out one turn of this. And then Lissa is just going to swing her axe, and hopefully she doesn't spark. If she doesn't spark, then I continue with the fight and try to get her to finish the fight by attacking, not killing the enemy, just attacking. I'm sorry, specifically killing the enemy. Sorry. So we're going to do it again. So that is an example right there of where she builds up her internal spark meter, but she does not risk the chance of sparking something because she specifically finished the fight. Again, these are kind of like hidden values. Oh good, she learned it. So she's done. Bring her out of the party, we can throw Subaki in now. She just needed to learn hypergravity, um, and she did. So. So, talking more about this Lissa situation. Lissa needs to use the main ability that she just learned, which is good, in the final form, the final boss, to learn Dimensional Break. So, what we're doing is just getting that meter up as much as possible. Uh, I kind of want to be careful about this. Yeah. Actually, 
Yeah, so we're gonna use Maim instead, which is a stronger attack for more PP. Okay, good. So, part of the problem with this whole um, strategy is that it's it's all or nothing when you get to the final fight. If you do trigger Dimensional Break and there's otherwise unfortunate circumstances in the fight, you have permanently learned Dimensional Cut. Oh, sorry, Dimension Break. It changes over Sagas, <laughs> the name of that. Uh, but it's a instant kill to all enemies on the screen if they are not immune to instant death. And the first time that you spark something, and this is true for a lot of the Saga games, I know specifically in Romance of Saga 3 this is the case. Um, if you trigger something for the first time as a spark, usually its secondary benefits trigger immediately. Kind of like as a way to show the player that something, like basically the effects of the attack. So for instance, when you get Dimension Break for the first time to trigger, it means that uh, the instant death effect is 100% if the enemy is susceptible to it. But it's risky for the final stretch of the game because, one, we need to spark it, which is not guaranteed. Uh, but we're doing our best to have the best percent chance of that happening. And then we are uh, preparing Agniana as a potential backup in the event that... Uh, I'm going to try to play this safe. In the event that Lissa triggers Dimensional Break and we need to redo the fight, she will have permanently learned Dimensional Break if she triggers it once during that final stretch. So uh, we'll need to bring in Agniana as a potential backup to replace her. And if Agniana blows it up, then we just have to reload. To add to all of that, you might be wondering, why don't you just reload the game? Just like you do for every other fight. To which the response is, you're in the third form of the final boss at that point, and you can't just reload because you need to go all the way back. So, it's a rough and stressful situation to try to figure out. But the best we can do for a marathon is prepare Lissa, like, very, very carefully, and then... have Agniana as a backup. Ah, so this is like good and bad, right? This is good because I am showing you, you the viewer, I'm showing you that that's what I want to have happen in the final boss. It's bad because I just need to reload and redo that battle effectively because I don't want that to trigger, but that's effectively what I want to have happen. The reason I used Mame there was I was trying to get some EXP towards axes on her. Uh, towards the spark meter, but I was hoping that that meme was going to kill the enemy, but it didn't. Yes, the so Firebringer is an incredibly hard fight for a bunch of reasons. So I'm going to take an action with Subaki this turn and then hopefully avoid the scenario that happened last turn. Or last fight, where Lissa is able to kill on this hit. Uh, but yes, so I was talking about party rank. It's a hidden value, but you can generally associate your character's max skill. So you just saw that um, Chiago got to level 8 on spears. Rough estimation is that that's basically what our party level is, is around level 8. There's a way to check internally, but for this run, it's not super important. Uh, the final boss is level 18. So the game, you know, roughly expects you to be around level 18. Actually, I'm going to play this a little bit risky. And... So Chiago might kill. Okay, good. That's exactly what I want to have happen. So even if I got to level 18, it wouldn't help that much. It would take a long time, so we're not going to do that. I need to start preparing Agniana soon. Uh, but yeah, 
I was saying this earlier, but basically every other fight in the game is going to just default to what your party level is. But some of them have hard floors for which... Firebringer. Firebringer is level 18. Interestingly, in the PS Vita version, he is level 12. Puppy in the way. That is no puppy, that is a sea demon. Okay, uh, I am swapping out to you. I'm gonna check their techs before we finish this grind later. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna trudge on. When I say t check, I'm just gonna go in and make sure that Dimension Break will trigger somewhat reliably on both of these. Both Lissa and Ogniana. Okay, so we ranked up, we needed to do that. That was another thing I didn't talk about. I need to make sure that Aiming and Spiral Charge is leveled up on you. So she comes with Maim, which is really good. I should be doing this. Yeah. So Ogniana comes with Maim which was one of the first two skills that I needed to get. So, same thing with Agniana that I was just doing with Lissa. I'm gonna take a lot of actions. Specifically, uh, no, we're gonna end the fight because Conjuration's coming, which is gonna spawn another enemy. Specifically with Agniana, she just started out. So she can swing her ax a bunch of time and she's not gonna spark, and then she's gonna get closer to being able to spark. Check out our HP levels. <laughs> Jago has no HP. Um, so we're we definitely need to keep going. Oops. Casper needs about 15 more HP. Jago needs like 40 HP, so um, this grind does take a little bit of time, but I guess what's quote unquote interesting is that there's just like a lot of of things that need to come together before we're done with this grind. It's not just like straight EXP grind. There's a lot of moving parts about me setting things up correctly. So I'm trying to get HP up on some characters, but I also need to swap in Ellie said one more time to get some more levels uh, on her, or sorry, just general HP for her as well. So, and again, like even the fastest any percent of this game has a grind section because you absolutely need to get your party ready for the final boss. So it's not even like this is some sort of, you know, super marathon safe setup. It really is pretty much required. Now what I'm doing here is a little bit more than like a standard any percent grind for sure, but not that much more. Ooh, okay. So that could have triggered it. Let's finish him off real uh, can you go for- yeah, perfect. So that's showing off how main is a speed ability that allows you to bump your way up. So I was able to outspeed the enemy on that turn, which is good. 10 HP is okay, but we gotta keep going. So thankfully, even though he just got HP up, it's not like sparking attack where it's like he's gonna have a lower percent chance of getting HP up. It's he has the same percent chance of getting HP up again. Again, it's just all correlated to number of battles fought, so. Perfect. I strike anew, my time so Piercing Lightning here is like fine, but it makes it so that my whole setup for Agniana trying to get the last hit failed. Oh, he just got HP. Good. How much HP did you get, Jara? Look, <laughs> you get like four HP, dude. <laughs> Pointless. But we're getting close, honestly. Like, it's not too far. Agniana, I don't need to prepare her all the way. I mean, ideally, I do. Towards getting, uh,. Dimension break, but close is good enough. I really hope I don't have to use Agniana, but um, to me, like all this stuff right now of grinding is still not a waste of time because I still need to get stuff up. So it's just, we alter the way that we fight some of these battles a little bit. 
How are we doing? Do you get HP? All right, so he did get some more HP. Um, ideally, he has a bit more. Casper has 166 right now, which is good. 170 is like really what we would hope for. We still got a little bit to go. Okay, so we're gonna get hit by Poisonous Mist, but it's fine. So I try to do this setup so that Ogneon is the one to get the, the final hit. Unless you spark attack and ruin my plans, Arthur. <laughs> Everyone's just blowing it up. Oh, I love that camera zoom of the, the axe. Okay. Trying to think if there's anything else to explain. There's going to be a quiz after the stream, so... Hope you were paying attention. Ooh, 11 HP. 10 HP, okay. Now we're in business. Okay, I think we're going to take him out of the party, put Elisade in for a bit. Spirituals, let us proceed with caution. This <laughs> no. I'm gonna fail the quiz if that's on it. Don't do it, Tsubaki. Nice. That's that. Getting stronger by being walloped is a bad look. All right, I would say we have like a handful more. We're getting there. We're definitely getting there. Spirituals? And believe me, when we get to oops, the final stretch of the game, you'll be <laughs> you'll be happy that we did this preparation because thing like this game is or uh, sorry this route and run in general is very tame for most of it. There's a few like hardish fights, like the Queen Moth fights, a little tumultuous. But nothing is really that bad. And then you get to the Firebringer fight and everything is... The, the game is changed. Yes, we did. We discussed it a little bit before, but Firebringer's rank is 18 versus our roughly level 9 rank right now. targeting the wrong one. I'm specifically trying to use Chiago to target the one before the enemy that's like just about to take an action to cancel their action. Okay, that was good. That was a good United attack. Man, Ogneon has a ton of HP. Wish Chiago had that HP. Oh, I see. Uh, yes, it goes way, way higher. So, Firebringer Prime, which is like the quote-unquote true final boss if you basically do all the side quests in the game related to Scarlet Shards, is I think it's like 48 or something, so it goes way up. But 18 is the minimum. But the idea is that it, it generally happening here. Okay. Alright, we're gonna play this a little risky. This tree cleaver may not actually kill. But the the idea is that most enemy encounters just match your level. So if I was level 20, Firebringer would be level 20. But if I'm level 10, then Firebringer is gonna be level 18, because that's its minimum. Okay, this is good. Uh, you know what? I think let's get hypergravity to level one. We just did, so we're gonna just test out. This is a marathon, so we're gonna be like very careful about it. I'm gonna test out on Ogniana that 
Hopefully Dimension Break triggers here. It's not a flat percent chance, so there is a percent chance that it would fail if we go when we bring it to the final boss, but the fact that it triggered there is good. And I already know that Lissa can trigger it, so I would say that we're good to proceed. So we're done grinding. I need to reload the save here, which is fine. Let's just make a safety save for the sake of it. The sake of the scream and the marathon. We're done. So we're going to go all the way back up to the top right of the map, northeast. And we're going to do a few things. We're going to fight a boss called the Volcanic Dragon. This fight is only a little bit rough because there's one stipulation to how this whole thing works. So, the Volcanic Dragon, after we beat it, it's going to drop a weapon that is the same weapon type as the party member in the fight that has the highest weapon skill. I know, that's a mouthful. But basically, we want to get a weapon for Subaki, so we're going to need to make sure that she is specifically the strongest weapon skill in the party. Which is a really weird requirement, but basically it means that um, some of our party members are uh, not eligible for the fight. Which almost definitely is Giago. It's actually quite a few of these. Alright, so we can bring Ellie's which is great. We cannot bring any of these three. And a large portion of these are just going to be kind of useless characters. So, actually we can bring him, which is good. I'm gonna do this. This is kind of like a one-time setup for this team. But the idea is that she is... Oh, I can't bring her. What am I doing? Oh, we can bring her, though. Cool. I don't want her taking actions, though, so she's kind of a dead character. Yeah. Uh, but you see that she's level 8, so... This team is eligible. So, Chiago's not in our party, which means that it's not the friendliest fight. This fight is very easy if you have a dedicated spear user. Um, but we got a defender, so we should be okay. This is the... the jam is back. Gotta really make sure that this call lightning goes off. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Okay. Looking good, Arthur. Looking good. Oh, this is really good because hopefully B dies from this lightning. B did not die from B dies from this. B dies, B dies, B dies. All right, great. That was sketchy and then everything was all smiles. Okay. Mmm, water ball. Okay, so the whole reason that we got Subaki, I probably should have talked about this, because we talked about Archwitch, we got her for hypergravity, uh, but she was largely just because we got Tsubaki. We got Tsubaki so that we can use that move that you just saw there, which is called Golden Note. When enemies are casting a spell, there's a number associated with how many turns it's going to take for them to go off the spell. Like right now, you see one and one. It means that on this turn, it's going to go off. Golden Note is an ability that allows you to extend the enemy's magic casting. It has an 80% chance of success and is very, very powerful. Okay, good. Oh, 27. Whoa, he's got like 200 HP now. That's really good. Okay, so because Tsubaki was the highest level here, we should get the uh, Crimson Short Sword. Crimson Blade. It's a short sword. Okay, so 
Now I'm going to sw swap my party back to what it was, which is what this feature is. And make sure that... What did I just do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Ellie says already here. What am I doing? <laughs> Been lost in the menu, you know how it is. Casper comes back in. We're going to put Subaki with the Crimson Blade that we just got. So I triggered this earlier. We're gonna say no here. I'm not gonna do development. I triggered the first half of this earlier. I'm gonna come here, talk to Griffin. Griffin is going to train Chiago to just get plus one on his spear level. So he's now level nine, which is like one above. It's basically, if you're familiar with Pokemon, it's like a rare candy. Just gives him a little bit more strength without having to do with the fight. Uh, basically go through another party level, which is a whole bunch of fights. So. Uh, we didn't get Tissy Sack, but we don't need her. Unlike other routes of this game, I was only going to use her for getting the Benison, but I don't use her for the final stretch. Tissy Sack is a great character, however, she is very, very fast, and the, the second form of the final fight is where I would use her, and I need slow characters for that. Okay, so we're going to do some micromanaging here. Make sure you've got Doublet on. That's fine. You should have the... Doublet on. Got Thievery on. I think that should do it. It's really just to make sure that the Doublets are on. Okay, so we're going to do our first round of smithing, which is basically just upgrading. Uh, it's very important to try to get Lightning Resistance, even though you think he's the Firebringer. You should have fire resistance. It's actually very important to have lightning resistance because he's much more threatening in his first form with lightning damage than he is with fire. But really, when we upgrade all this stuff, we are getting uh, both fire and lightning. So, <laughs> for marathon safety, I am upgrading my block chance from 7 to 8 on these shields, which is something I usually don't do. But you know what? Why not? So the protective suits are minus three to speed, but when you upgrade them, they specifically become um, minus five to speed. And we need that for the second form of the final boss. I'm gonna have some bucklers on hand. We are just doing some extra equipment here. It's a soldier suit. We're gonna do both of these get them to become, uh, sorry, protective suit into soldier suit. So you see minus five mobility there. You probably didn't see it because it was moving kind of fast, but um, it's important. And everybody's got doublets, so. Okay, that was a mouthful, but we are off to the final stretch of the game. And you might think that, oh, it's like almost over. <laughs> it's not almost over. This marathon may be going on for quite a while, or it could be the first try. It's probably not gonna be the first try, but. Don't worry about it. We'll get there when we get there. First things first, we have to fight Francis and the girls. So we were talking about the librarians before. They hold the secret to I Hanum because they are being controlled right now by, uh, sorry, by Siegfried, who is the essence of the Firebringer. All right, Blizzard Tower is a pretty good start. Okay, so the tower, is a very strong magic. Oh, big damage from... Thiago. We have to be very careful about the tower. So we're specifically going to need to hammer him down, regardless of what the other girls are doing. And we're going to start to protect her. Who are you guys? Uh, maybe he says a lot. Okay, anyways, we really need to make sure the tower doesn't go off, but this is good. Clips has one of the coolest animations ever. Ever. He's dead. He's just lying there. Okay, we should be able to get a big 
uh, United attack on this. I'm going to just call Fetters. We're going to see Eclipse again. What? <laughs> she blocked. Crazy. These librarians don't mess around. These are the most hardcore librarians you've ever seen. That one's pretty cool too. Alright. Should be enough. So this is a perfect example of a fight that its party level minimum is one, meaning that it's just gonna match your level. But given our party is so strong, we like easily outpace them. And that's gonna be true for the next fight as well against Siegfried. So Siegfried is the embodiment of the Firebringer as a human. He basically is, Firebringer is like some celestial being that uh, has caused this earth problems many times before, but we're going to try to actually destroy him this time. So Siegfried is the embodiment of Firebringer, who basically like enters politics and messes up the world and makes it bend to his will. So this woman, if you remember, Sasha from the very beginning of the game, gave us Scarlet Shards and told us to drown them in Ihanim. We're about to go to Ihanim, which is a place after this. <laughs> Librarian moves are so cool. Reflecting on our journey a little bit. Game says, hey, save your game. You know, I'm going to take the game's advice. Take the marathon, we'll just make a backup save, just in case something went horribly wrong. But I think we're good. Okay, so Siegfried, sorry, Siegfried, is uh, a relatively easy fight. He can counter and block, so, all right, so focusing strike is not the best. He basically just has a raw chance of blocking our attacks, so we're gonna use Call Lightning. If he started to cast a move, or sorry, cast magic, then when he's casting magic, he can't block. But, all right, so that's this is what I'm talking about. So now he's going to do Churning Earth, which is basically his death sentence, because once he starts casting, he can't block anymore. So in this case, I'm just going to let Ellie said take the, take the death blow. And it's over. Okay, so this is kind of like the precursor of the final boss. Now, after this fight, you are in point of no return. The game warns you, tells you pretty clearly to save before this. So now we're going into the bottom area. And uh, all I can say is gear up, because if you thought the game was overwhelming before, you have no idea. Okay, we're going to set up our party. We're going to register this set. Then we're gonna start up, set up our party in opposite order of the phases of the final boss. So we're gonna take, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, Listen's here, Never mind. So specifically we're gonna have momentum, Listen second. Arthur is gonna come out for Ellie said. And we'll take care of menuing in a bit, but the idea is that we're going to save this to Retinue 3. Then we're going to switch over to Mystical Might, and now we're doing this for round 2, phase 2. We're going to put a bunch of mages on our party, so... Uh, sorry, not Agniana. Oh, we are going to use Agniana for this part as well. Ellie said and Taria. Mystical Might for sure. Save this one to 2. And we'll go back to this, change to this, we're going to use this for phase 1. Change this. We're going to very specifically make sure that we have free for all on, and then we'll talk about that in a second. We gotta go through equips, so this goes back to being Ring of Heroism. She needs to have Wing Amulet on, 
Defenders have these. Protectors Bracers goes on you. Slow for now is fine. She needs to have this on again. Ring of the Fae is good. Anything else here? I think so. So this is where I need to follow my notes kind of specifically. So the general idea is that we want to make our... Oops, I just completely messed up my menu. <laughs> I need to make these characters as slow as possible. So Archwitch gets the Hermit Ring, which is good. Then we're going to go to Taria. These are our spellcasters, and when we get to the second form of the final boss, we want to try to make them as slow as we can. Tari's going to get the Strange Bone. Again, I'm just trying to get minus mobility on these characters. Uh, Ogniana is going to be next. So Staff, I should have Staff on. Staff is minus... Actually, can I take this off? Give me a sec. Yeah, it's minus 7. I wanted to make them as slow as possible. So we're going to put the Soldier Suit on her later. Um, that's good for now. And then Ellie said is also going to be slow, but we're not going to do that for now. More stone on you. Ellie said it's going to be the hardest to make slow. Um, and then you're our last party member. That's all good. Okay, so free for all. Let's make our formation as good for the, the first form. Looks pretty good. Make another save here. A lot of things are going to happen now. Okay, so this is, we've been talking about this. This is a very hard final boss. There are three forms. They are very distinct from each other. And unfortunately, the first form is kind of dumb. The boss can take two actions. You can either use Shade of Shams or Shade of Uzume. And we're hoping for a Shade of Uzume because it is a no damage. Shams means that we have to basically just defend, just like this. What am I doing? Making people dance to your whims. I wonder if Shams would be willing to lend a hand. This guy doesn't look too. This is the source of all evil. I shall cut. Unfortunately, when you get Shams on turn one, basically, it's a waste of a turn. Get some good battle music here. If I see Shams again, I'm just gonna restart. Yeah. So we're gonna reattempt once. I can reload from a save. So the biggest resource to manage throughout this whole thing is how much life points we have in our party. Um, and this is gonna continue for the next three phases of the fight. So I can, you know, I can reset a lot here to save a little bit of time. But I need to be very careful because I need to have sustainable life points to make it all the way through. So this is a much better start. I just want to see straight Azume, just like this. Azume all day. So the first phase of Firebringer, which is this. Shams. Oh, can I do Spiral Charge? Okay. Uh, the first phase will have basically his HP will go all the way down to zero and then he'll recover all his HP and then you do it again oh okay so we saw Kata's comfort go off before where we got all our health back but now we don't zoom in okay this is really good so this is great positioning I can set up another lightning I'll push him to form one phase two I guess I should say this is good. Usually if you get to this part of the fight and you have lightning triggered, um, you have more BP and some more momentum. So um, we can make it work. Shalms. So if we get Shalms one more time, we're probably just going to have to restart. But um, I'm going to do my best to kind of keep keep up the, the commentary momentum. But we could very, just brace yourself, we could very well be doing this all again and again multiple times. So... Zoom in. Zoom in. Shams! Uh, yeah, it's not good. So we got shelter on him before, which is very good. 
survive at least one hit here. Zume. Uh, so we're gonna go for. Uh, we're gonna go for big wins. So I switch to thorny fetters on that turn. Chomps. Not good. Uh, okay. Well, what are my options? I don't have options. <laughs> my options are hope that Izume comes one more time. This may not kill, but her a swing of her quarter staff might be enough to push it. Uh, okay. We have to hope that she doesn't get damage rolled and killed on this Shams. 144, baby. Alright. Put all your power into the swing. All of your power. It wasn't enough. <laughs> that was close, but... Close, but no Siggy. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, so we're going to reload to get all of our LP back and do it again. So I would say Form 1 is like the most huh. stupid. Form 2 is very complicated. And then Form 3 is get a percent roll or get owned. But Form 1 is like very much you're just hoping to see no action over and over. So something that's... So the actions that you do throughout the entirety of the game actually dictate the way that Firebringer builds his skill set. It's a very, uh, very complex system. Also, you, you notice these characters are like reacting to Firebringer's presence. So usually Kata's comfort will go off once per battle, but sometimes it's more than that. If it happens more than once, then it's like really, really good. Shams again. We're just going to start to play the safe, go through the whole thing. Right, so he had more HP, or he will have more HP in like a casual fight, because he's going to match your party level. Like, whatever your internal party level is. So if you're playing casually, it's probably going to be way higher than level 18. Mine is 10 right now. But his minimum is 18. So this is just, like, the minimum amount of HP that he possibly could have. But most likely, when people casual, they're going to see him with way, way more. And he's going to have different abilities and the whole thing. Zume. Making people dance to your whims this is good positioning too that Chiago is in front of Firebringer. So when characters are given their speed, it's usually at the beginning of the battle and kind of persists through the rest of the battle. So, um, good. Alright, so we really need that first Benison to trigger on after the first Shams, or else everyone's going to die on the second one. But this effectively extends it by one. Shom. I would say this is not going great. I would say... Unfortunately, did not get a second Kata's Comfort. Zume, great. So just to preface Form 2, it may be a half hour before we see Form 2. Hopefully not. Usually this is like kind of a pain, but it isn't so bad. It just takes a few attempts. Chomps. Alright, so this is where we're in the same situation as last time, basically.
Shams again, dude. So we can make it do. We can make it do. If we got one more Izume, which we did. Okay. So I'm gonna like play this safe, I guess, where we're just gonna do lightning. And then next turn I can defend if he uses Shams, and then the turn after lightning's gonna occur. We're off to form two. So form two is a very complex setup in which we use hypergravity. To reduce the enemy's BP. Turn over turn over turn. It's very complex. You have to do actions in a specific order, and the boss needs to obviously cooperate. All right, very important. Another stone. If you do the first action, or if you if you throw the stone at the top instead of another stone? Question mark. Um, the boss's boss's AI set is way harder, which is a great mechanic. All right, change to this. We're gonna be very careful about our speed here. Uh. Why are you so fast? Oh, right, right. I'll take this from Casper. I'm gonna make sure that you're slow. And she's gonna be the fastest one. We're actually going to swap it out. Because uh, Archwitch is already kind of slow. We just want to be very careful for this whole setup. Um, for good. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. She doesn't need anything. So I can restart a fight to like come back to this menu, but if I do, I lose LP on everybody. So make sure everybody's got what they need. There's one more I have to do over here. Uh, I want to check hypergravity on all of them. I'm not messing anything up. Okay, here we go. Form two. Okay, so form two. It's a very strange fight. He summons clones to come attack for him, and he often just does counterattacks. I need to have him just do counterattacks over and over, basically. Um, I can attempt to sweep him on turn one, but everybody else is not going to do anything. So we didn't get a stun, which is fine. It's kind of expected. It's Stun is pretty much the only status effect that he's susceptible to. Okay, so we're gonna get Agniana and Taria. So the party order for speed is really good, so we really hope this kind of goes through. Um, but until we start landing hypergravity, we can't do any actions. I just have to um, hope that he doesn't take any actions. So he's doing question marks, which means they're counterattacks, and we're in good shape. So do nothing, good. Good. Again, pass the turn. So first hypergravity is going to go off. Next turn is the most dangerous for the chance of him taking an action. Okay, he didn't, which is great. So we're going to trigger another hypergravity. And then after this turn, this is where we're like, quote unquote, safe. Because what's going to happen is that hypergravity is reducing the whole party, the enemy party's BP by three. So I just used minus six on this turn and minus three on the turn before. So now, um, yeah, we have to play this carefully. So we're not gonna trigger hypergravity on this turn. And we're gonna go for this echo here. Or sorry, this, yep, this is good. So we have to be very, very cautious about our actions because if, we are in front of one of the shadow clones and they use echo then they're going to use the same ability that we just used on that turn so it's very scary i'm going to play this fight very safely which is to say that i truly don't want to see echo go off so i'm being a little bit slow here but it's for good reason making sure that we're good hypergravity's coming okay Right, so if Chiago is like first, and then someone uses Echo after him, then whatever action Chiago used, the enemy is going to use it against you. So it's very, very bad. 
So unfortunately, we're getting hit by um, Copycat here, which means that... The Shadow Clone is going to spawn new clones. Good. Okay, so now Archwitch and Ogneon are just going to keep casting Hypergravity every turn. And what that effectively is doing, sorry I didn't explain this well, is stunning the enemy party to basically have no BP. Or at max, one BP. So it's a very particular setup, but it works great. Okay, so see this, Echo? I need to be very careful to not Echo, or use an action with him. I would love to do this to aim, to hit D, but if I do, then I kill him, and then there's a big enemy um, United attack, which is bad. So instead, we're going to do... No, not that. Can I do aiming you? I'm going to be super careful, because I think you're targeting E, and I don't want you to die. Which is very, very particular. Okay. Right, exactly. What Hoda said is exactly the point. You have to be super careful not for that to happen. And it can be dangerous, because that can happen with... Um, hypergravity. Right, so this hypergravity is going to kill D, so I really need to keep him here. And do nothing this turn. Alright, so we can trigger this. We need to remember that we're triggering these on B specifically. Um, but once... The good news is, is that once... Yeah. Oh no, shoot. Another clone is going to spawn. Kind of sucks. Okay. Oh no, there's already four clones. Out. What am I doing? Okay. Never mind. Okay, echo, echo. So B. We can actually do this safely? Yes. Yes. Okay. So once this. Once the dark clone is out, you blocked! What are you doing? It means that no extra allies are going to be coming out. Alright, please don't copy yet. Please don't. You cut. Oh, actually, it's okay. Wait, shoot. Echo. No, we're good. We're good. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Right, so <laughs> I want to explain this because I think it's interesting. I need to keep him here because it's possible that this one's going to die and they unite attack. And if they target this one and he's out of position, then A and C are going to bump together. And as soon as somebody gets a united attack and you in this fight, you're dead. So... Uh, very careful. Very, very careful. Okay, I'm gonna target D with you. And you. And you're gonna do nothing because of Echo. God. Right, just like that. Okay, cool. Actually, I don't know who Tari's gonna be targeting now. Uh, this is actually going fairly well, if not slow. I'm getting kind of owned by this guy using Echo a lot, but that should be okay. Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. No problem. Safely navigated that. I didn't really make this clear, but the whole reason that this strategy works is that Firebringer's most basic action costs 3 BP. So he will never do anything. Still got echoes, man. It's echoes. Actually, in this case, I'm safe to do this because Firebringer's never going to be killed. So we're never going to get a bump. And that looks good to me. Can I do this? Yeah. This strategy can be much, much faster, depending on what the Shadow Clones do. Even the 
Um, the fastest ending for Sentai time uses this strategy, but it goes, as you can imagine, much faster. Also, they're not like uh, panicking for <laughs> marathon safety like I am. They're just kind of doing it, you know? Uh, good on hypergravities. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so they're done. Effectively, we have won this fight. We just need to make sure we don't mess up the hypergravities. But we're good. So now we can just start to pile on the damage. So if you remember from before, I said that we were going to get Water Blast. Water Blast is a spell that causes defense down. And we're just going to hammer him. So this is great. This is really, really good. So we're we took care of the clones, they're done. We're just gonna continue to pummel him. Again, once his HP goes to zero, he's gonna go all the way back up to max HP, and then gotta do the whole thing again. But this time he's not gonna summon clones anymore, so we just kinda do this. I, I don't think I've ever seen rank one pierce into split cranium. <laughs> Very nice. Rank one pierces. I that just goes to show you what a, a marathon Run kind of looks like where you do a lot more battles. <laughs> uh, okay, good. Block! So this is why I call lightning is especially good. Because you can't trigger block. Okay. Now, again, dude. We are at the mercy of form 3. We're not, like, we're, we're not done yet. Okay, triggering the form there is really good because this lightning is going to be all hitting the next form. So form three. At the very beginning of the fight, we need the boss to cooperate. The boss is going to be coming with two levitanes, which are two axes. And we need to trigger dimension break. You saw me grinding before for Axe on both Agniana and Lissa. I need to enter that fight, use Mame, and I need Dimension Break to hit. And not only do I need to hit, I need the enemy actions to be such that they're not guarding each other in a bad way. And uh, I need both of them to die in turn one. And if we get through that, we have a chance of getting through. If we don't, uh, we basically have one more shot after that, and then if it doesn't work with Agniana, then we are all the way back. So ordinarily, I wouldn't just cast Hypergravity again, but playing it safe just in case it takes extra turns. Alright, so this should kill, and we should be good. And we are off to form three, which is, uh, it's like usually okay if you get the dimensional, dimension break, but if you don't, then it's very bad. Hmm. <clears throat> oh man. Last stone. All right, here we go. We get the the jam of jams. All right, I'm gonna be taking this pretty slow. So we're gonna change to our final set. We need to make sure that Lissa is as fast as she can be. Wind barrier. Do have the soldier suit from Agniana. And definitely on momentum view. That's it. Let's do it. 205 HP. It's pretty good for Casper. It's one more time for my safety and sanity. Okay. Let's go! Oh, 
Okay, so if I see double question marks on the Levitanes, I need to restart or decide to risk it all. I probably would restart on the first attempt, but the second one, we'll see. Okay, this is as good as it. This is the. This is as good as it gets. All right, so I just need to learn. I just need to learn Dimension Break right here. And I need both of these to die. Let's go. <gasps> no! Very bad. Very bad. Okay, she blocked, but... Alright. not. It's not good, but... Let's feel it out. So this is why we brought Ogniana. Okay, if you... Oh, oh, okay. We have to risk it to try to extend this. This is just not... Overall, just very not good. So this... He could be using self-immolation. Or cover. Ah, oh, now I'm stressed. Now I'm stressed mess. That sucks. Okay. So... The one Levitane was covering the other Levitane, which meant that... Wait. Okay, that's good. So you're saying there's a chance. You're saying there's a chance. You are saying there is a chance. You're saying there's a chance. 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 Alright, hang in there. Bear with me. Oh, shit. Okay, so, still good, still good. We're gonna get a big lightning here. We've got another distract, which is great. So now, prominence is coming again. The fact that we blocked it before is great, but now I need to be like, uh, very careful. Okay, I really hope that Chiago doesn't get hit here. But now we can safely attack you, and you're going to hit, uh, you're gonna hit you. This is like really, really all or nothing. Please, Chiago, don't die. Okay, I mean, it's not good. It's it's not good, but um, it's the best that could have happened. Mm, as much as I want to do lightning, should just do this. Try to get to next phase. It's a stressful situation. So Mame is gonna decrease the speed and hopefully on the next turn I can outspeed him. Okay, so that that's fine. This is where we're just at the mercy of will this boss allow us to uh, continue by it using counter moves more more often than not, just like this, which is good. Need these, need these turns, desperately. So we, this guy will counter blunt damage, so we can't use spiral charge. We can use uh, aiming only. Lightning. Okay. Are you saying there's a chance? So Falling Zodiac is where we get into really rough territory. Really, really rough. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm going to use Mame. Uh, I changed my mind. Golden Note for the maximum damage. So call Zodiacs, I really hope that we get caught as comfort here. We're gonna lose BP as part of this. No! 
Not good. Not good. This is particularly bad. Alright. <laughs> this is like really coming down to the wire. So the lightning's gonna go off and put us in a decent position, but we... Oh, I didn't explain this. So we have another set of HP to go through, as if it wasn't ridiculous enough. Oh, actually, that's really good that this happened on this turn, because now I can poke him and he loses his turn. That's actually really good. So you're saying there's a chance. Yes. Okay, so this cancels this turn. It's We have yet another series to go through. We really need, like... It, it's it's not good. It's not good. It's not good. What's up with your speed, dude? It's not good. This is not good. I really need... Um... <laughs> it's like, I need... Lissa or Subaki to get hit, and not very specifically not the other two. Oh man, there's nothing else. I, like I have, I have shelter with him, so I can protect her, but I need him alive. So that's not an answer. Ah, <sighs> okay, here we go. You attacked her. I can't believe it. Based Mesmerize. I mean, you hit a good target. Uh, you hit a bad target here. All right, well, we lose. That was an emotional journey. We can try one more time with Agniana. That was terrible. You hit both of my main party members instead of the other two. So Liss is out because she learned Dimension Break. She permanently has it on, so she is just permanently useless to us, which is a shame. No. So we're going to power you up. Make you as fast as possible, and hope for the best. Uh, I got the gax. So we basically have one more shot before we have to do all of this again. All three forms again. Our LP is looking pretty good, so I can kind of risk it all. Um, just want to make sure I'm not missing something. That was a heart attack. That was very close. If Kata's comfort triggered on that one turn, it would have been fine. What? This is way better than being queen of group. How are you so slow? This is way better than being queen of group. I think I'm gonna try. Does the wicked one feel the Actually, no. I I take it back. Seconds. Let's let's be safe. I hope to quote unquote. I don't know why she was so slow. I just powered her up. Come on. Agniana. Fast. If you ask me, this is <sighs> I don't think I really have room here to... Because... So, uh, so, let me explain what's happening. These two could be covering each other. If they cover each other, then one of them's not going to die. One of them could be using self-immolation, which is self-target, and that's fine. I need... I don't know. Uh, but if they're covering the Firebringer, then it's fine. Making people dance to your whims I have one so chance left for this, basically. That I can re-roll, but if it happens, I mean, sure. Is so this is it. You are an example to live by, Firebringer. This is it. This is it. I hope I don't get the same as the, the first Agniana battle. <laughs> okay, same as last time. 
making people dance. All right, hope for the best. So enjoyable. You are an example of the fire bringer. She <gasps> She did learn it. I thought she didn't. Learn it. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Like a flower in bloom. Okay. Just squeeze out damage. Do what you can. Golden note. Golden note. Spiral chart. Okay, got the distract. So I said this way earlier, but that's an 80% chance of happening. We really just needed to land once. So form one is basically in the book, the noose titans. Okay. Ideally, Oh, cool. She might be able to snipe. If she snipes, that's really good. I'm either... Eh. I think we're going to play kind of risky. I need this snipe to kill, and then I'm going to set up as much damage on the next form as I can. Let's do it. I believe in you, girl. I believe. I believe. My time has come. Yes. Yes. Look at that. So all this damage is now occurring on form 2. Okay, so Psychokinesis is going to single target. I need to protect my most valuable party member, which I believe right now is going to be uh, Chiago. She has slightly more health. I need to start hitting Maim so that he starts going slower, but it's not a huge priority. Um, and we'll just do this this turn. All right, please don't own me. Oh, yes. Good, good. He lived. Okay. That's great. Very good, very good. Meteor Bringer. We're pretty much hoping the same thing happens again. Um, so you can do Maim. We're going to block you again. <sighs> okay. Good, really good, really good. She's a great target. And she's a living because we did some extra grinding and he's throwing. It's the run. Oh, snipe again. Could you snipe again? I swear to I swear to Izume. You snipe again, girl. Humans would exchange with gods. Yes. Would. Mmm, yeah. Oh, that was quelled. Interesting. Alright, so that didn't work out, but it's okay. Alright. Phase 3, Form 3. To quote a certain other speed gamer, all the marbles. All smiles. Yes! Yes! This is it. Alright. Very careful. We used aim, right? Good, 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 good. Falling Zodiac. Powerful move. Scary move. Definitely blocking him, right? Oh, 
Oh, big United attack coming? Tsubaki, you did fantastic this fight. I'm sorry you're permanently dead, but... Yes! Take that, Saga series. Nice run. <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll time through the credits. It's the last run of the marathon. Why not? We do time through credits. It's part of JRTA. But that's, that's it. We did it. That was a heart attack. <laughs> oh man, the first attempt at that fight was uh, truly, truly something. But thanks to the GGs, that was good. Uh, well, I guess we don't have to necessarily play through the credits. We'll let the, uh, the organizers decide, but I guess I'll just say my two cents now. Let me... Let's at least get through um, the text part of the, the finale before the true staff role happens. Uh, yeah, this game is great. I think it's a tough speed game to kind of get into. It takes a lot of learning. It's not a super popular game, but I do love it. It's great. Um, the final boss is never free and really, really hard. And... I mean, for a marathon save, oh, we can let the characters speak here, sure. As I skip all of them. Um. Well, hello there, Leonard. You look well, Sasha. What else? That's a relief. Honey, guess what? Leonard's here. I'm just engrossed by the characters now. Hey there, Leonard. Harvest all done with. Yep, had the best haul in the land again. Cards are fine, right? Of course. As if you gave them any choice in the matter. <laughs> so anyways, Sasha's all recovered because we took care of Firebringer. She's actually like a demon beast woman. <laughs> That's all in the past now. I suppose that well, But um We're friends well, there. At least stay for dinner. Nah, don't sweat it. I'll see you around. Oh yeah. What what I just fought was the easiest form of that final boss. Just just wrap your head around that. Hey there. Finally, gods. Gods. Reckon I landed you in hot water. I'm really sorry about that. It's not your fault, Leo. I'm the one who decided to tag along with you after all. She gets Dad emotional. Me to get okay, so interestingly, when I was fighting Firebringer, I agreed, when I which means I couldn't see you before I got into the first form, so, I actually play as Lissa for a second and I make an action. No, it's I'm either here. to wish that enemies go away or wish that I spend well, like eternity with Leo we'll or something. Thanks, yeah. And based on that choice, if I chose the spend eternity with Leo, the, the first form is a harder fight. So obviously we can't do that. But then the repercussions is that during this ending. Um, we don't spend a tourney with her, and she runs off and marries somebody else. <laughs> I know what to thank you, Leo. So. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Nothing ever changes around here. Well, guess I'll sharpen up my sickle and hit the hay. Leonard doesn't care. He's a farmer. And then Chiago shows up creepily. And that's it. <laughs> Did I, do we really, do we really beat the game? Chiago showing up there at the end is kind of whack, but you get a little bit of side story of every character that joined your party. <laughs> it's a little, it's, it's definitely weird at the end there. It's kind of cool though, they give you some, uh, some of the backstory. Our man Casper here did great. Oh yeah, the intro, intro song slash credit song is uh very well produced. It's very good. Okay, um, was I saying anything else? I don't think so. 
I'm just talking about Saga. This game's good. It's kind of hard. Um, it's a speed game. So I was saying at the very beginning of the run, this is the Leonard route. Leonard is the fastest character in terms of just like open, open access to everything. All the other characters have similar routes. You know, uh, a lot of them pick up twin spikes, which is something we did for beating Queen Moth. But a lot of them have very varying story triggers to get through to the final boss, whereas Leonard's is basically just straight up open. Almost. And uh, what else talk about? Yeah, so this run went pretty well. Honestly, like, it's there's variance when you play this game through everything before the final boss, but it's usually not a ton. If you're trying to grind out a good time, then yes, you need to get good battles and not get owned by sparking. But this run, it actually went really well. I learned block at a good time. It took a little bit longer on the, the grind, but it, there was one turn on the final form of the final boss where Subaki lived with 20 HP. And that was specifically because we did a little bit of extra grinding and that triggered a united attack later in the fight and then made form three easy see it's just some uh some inspiration turns out the marathon route safety stuff actually did pay off which is big and agniana really came in clutch so very happy with this run that it survived it's uh that was truly a heart attack near the end I got a few, few minutes. Just kind of calming down. That was a uh, emotional journey. <laughs> so I hope you all enjoyed Saga Marathon. It's a great, great marathon. This year is cool. Did one day, cranked it out. A lot of Saga Frontier. Chat room, please tell me uh, what your favorite saga run of the day was. You don't have to say this one. In fact, not this one. Any of the others. I know none of you would say this. <laughs> which of the which of the saga frontiers was the, was the best? I gotta go back and watch the uh, the first two because unlike unlike some people, I didn't wake up at five a.m. to put this marathon on. I slept well past five a.m., so I missed some stuff. Well, seven a.m. PlayStation 3 experience. <laughs> T260? Good. T260 is a special place in my heart from like when I first got into speed gaming. I used to watch Falcon play it. Saga is a great series. It's very good for speedrunning, I think, because a lot of the abstract mechanics allow you to kind of bend things to your will. But there's a pretty recurring theme among Saga runs is that the final boss is usually insane. <laughs> for better or for worse, it's usually pretty good. Me personally, I was so excited when this game came out. I played it in Japanese uh, when the Steam version came, or I'm sorry, when the Switch version came out in Japanese, and then, of course, localized versions, pretty good too. 
I know that this game isn't up everybody's ally. How I? Alley. And it's a little abstract at times and a little hard to grasp, but I think it's a really good game, and I'm uh I'm glad to have learned it. All right, we are approaching t like official time, which is after we save our file. With, so this little image here is actually custom made from the game with our party, which is actually pretty cool. God, I'm not focused on my menu, I just lost seconds. Precious seconds of marathon time. Alright, that's time. Insane pace. 224. Okay. <laughs> A little slow, but the fact that we made it through... That's all that matters. Between you and me, that's all that matters. If you timed it, the final boss hit, it was probably underestimate. But who knows? Okay, that's gonna be it for me. Thanks for watching, everybody. I had a lot of fun today. I'm gonna go decompress. Let's go listen to Urpina's theme before we call it a day. Hang out in the bog. And I'm gonna switch over. I'll see you around. Saga 2020.